This is Danny Ray from the Rock Church in Sunnyvale. God gave me a word for you, the grandmothers at the church, and I want to share that with you today. I hope that it's inspirational and a blessing. Grandmothers are great, Deuteronomy 4 and 9. Only take care and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The history and laws of the Israelites for centuries were maintained as an oral tradition, passed down from generation to generation. And so, when Moses wrote this book, it was to a people who had an understanding of making known to your children and your children's children the things they had seen. From the scriptures, I give you Ruth and Lois as examples of godly grandmothers. From my life, I give you Granny Moore. I'm assuming that you are familiar with the book of Ruth, and so will only highlight a few parts of the story. There was a famine in Bethlehem, and Elimelech took his wife Naomi and two sons to dwell in Moab. While there, Elimelech died. The two sons married, one married Ruth and the other Orpah. After 10 years, both sons died, leaving no children. Naomi decided to return to Bethlehem because she had heard that prosperity was again present in the land of her nativity. Both daughters-in-laws wept at the thought of separating from Naomi. Orpah decided to stay in Moab, but Ruth said, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And so they went to Bethlehem. In a short time, there was a poetic encounter between her and an eligible husband. Ruth soon married Boaz, and they eventually had a son. Ruth was David's great-grandmother. She was a personification of loyalty, commitment, devotion to God, and faith. When faced with an uncertain future, eventually, was revealed that she was in the lineage of Jesus. Now to the letter written to Timothy regarding his grandmother Lois. 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 6, verse 5. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well. Timothy had a rich family legacy, and it was noteworthy. It was not common. Paul's words were a way of reminding Timothy not to be remiss, negligent, forgetful, indifferent, or in decline regarding the things he had learned from Lois, his grandmother. Verse 6, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. It was significant that an importation occurred by the laying on of Paul's hands. Stir up the gift is a reference to Timothy's ministry. To stir up is a metaphor for coals of fire upon which ash has accumulated, as if it's almost gone out. That needs to be blown into a flame. You know, like when the Holy Ghost was poured out on you, as one translation puts it, that thou kindle the fire of the gift of God which is in thee. There is a striking similarity with Deuteronomy 4 and 9. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. And verse 6 that I just read, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now to my granny boy. The house I was born in was down the lane, down a gravel lane, a dirt lane, from my grandparents' house in Oklahoma. We moved to California when I was six months old and settled in a small town south of Bakersfield, a town called Lamont. Lamont is next door to that great metropolitan area known as Weed Patch. Often my granny would come to California for extended visits. I had numerous opportunities to spend time with her. She, she taught me by example what not to be, plain and simple. Granny was a hypochondriac. A lesson I learned was to trust God 
and not to worry excessively. The second example Granny taught me was to cherish the touch of my family and friends and wife. Touch can be extremely comforting and healing. I remember going to my grandmother's funeral. I, my, grand, my wife's grandmother's funeral. I started to walk away from the graveside group to be alone with grief in my heart. Sadness was on my countenance. My friend, Henry Pinkoff, noticed and followed me, put his hand on my shoulder, and somehow it soothed me in my distress. This experience, along with my lessons from Granny Moore, is why, unless there is a wall, I will offer reassuring words or a hand on the shoulder, if appropriate, for those suffering a loss. Granny Moore taught me to be generous. In retrospect, I realized she lived from old age pension check to old age pension check as assistance was called in those days. By this time, Granny had moved to California and lived in a small house in Bakersfield next to the church. Granny did not let a lack of resources stand in the way of generosity. Granny made the right moves to get the best results. She was a grandmother to the kids in the church. There was an entourage of kids waiting for the candy handout at every service. I was attending Bakersfield Junior College at that time. Many afternoons would find me knocking on Granny Moore's door. She would offer a scrambled egg, a tuna sandwich, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or whatever she might have, and we would sit down to have our now cherished moments together. To all who are grandmothers, God gave you to your grandchildren, someone who is a little less rushed someone to make believe with in a childhood world, someone to pretend that the child is a mom or dad and the grandmother is the kid, someone to help with homework, someone by example to teach about life, read a kid's Bible, exemplify a relationship with the Lord and help them work out their salvation. If you have or had grandmothers in the church, how fortunate you are and were. Pastor was so blessed. Cole and Ella, pastor's children, are exceptionally blessed. Grandmothers from each side of the family. David, my son, is blessed to have his 97-year-old grandmother still living and alert. What happens when grandmothers are rich in faith? I'm convinced that that same faith dwells in their grandchildren.